Hello, I'm Jake Tapper. It's a homecoming five years in the making, but to what kind of home? Will Sergeant Bo Bergdahl return? Will he be warmly welcomed as a man finally freed from enemy hands? Or will he be branded a deserter, the charge coming from a number of the soldiers with whom he served? The answer may lie in the new details that are starting to form a clearer picture of what really happened. In a desolate patch of coast province, Afghanistan, with the white flag of the Taliban waving and the wind kicked up by the Black Hawk helicopter, Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl walked free of his captors and into the hands of the U.S. military. We've been looking for you for a long time, they told him as tears filled his eyes. He is gaunt and blinking in the sun with no way of knowing that his final steps on Afghanistan soil would soon spark a firestorm of controversy, just hours after his rescue was announced. We were never told that there would be a, <coughs> an exchange of Sergeant Bergdahl for five Taliban. Totally not following the law. I, I think it was just wrong. Before the Fuhrer, there was joy. After nearly five years in captivity, their son Bo is coming home. As President Obama announced the news of Bergdahl's newfound freedom, flanked by his parents, Janie and Bob Bergdahl. I just want to say thank you to everyone who has supported Bo. He's had a wonderful team everywhere. Um, we will continue to stay strong for Bo while he recovers. The seemingly happy end to a long, determined search for America's only known prisoner of war in Afghanistan. A search that had started five years before. Well, I'm scared. Um, I'm scared I won't be able to go home. Uh, it is very un unnerving to be a prisoner. July 2009, a few short weeks after Bergdahl went missing from his observation post in Afghanistan, a video issued by the Taliban, a proof of life video showing Bergdahl denouncing the war in Afghanistan. Since I've been here and I've seen how these people live and function, we have indeed invaded a very independent state and very independent people. When they do a video like this, this is also distributed within their own ranks showing, aren't we great, aren't we effective? The then 23-year-old Bergdahl had become a very precious commodity to the Taliban, an American soldier in enemy hands. I think they wanted to make it clear that we've got him, but we're going to hold him as a prisoner and you need to act with us. And this is the key. This became their big bargaining chip. This was a huge chip for them to use. Halfway around the world, Bo Bergdahl's parents, Bob and Janie, learned of his disappearance when two uniformed soldiers appeared at their front door in their Haley, Idaho home. You know, it was just so devastating and overwhelming, I think, for, for them, for a lot of people. Family friend Walt Femling remembers those first few days as they absorbed the terrible news. Both of them hadn't slept for two or three days. It was pretty rough on Janie. They were really, you know, just praying a lot that uh, Bo would be released and he'd come home. For six months, their prayers were left unanswered until the Taliban released another video of their son, this time on Christmas Day. Dressed in his fatigues, he delivered a critique of American foreign policy. Do we, or even should we, trust those who send us to be killed in the name of America? Accompanied by photos of the torture of prisoners at Abu Ghraib. The U.S. military called it, quote, a horrible act which exploits a young soldier. Over the course of the next year, more videos were released, with Bergdahl sounding more and more hopeless. Just let me go. Let, get me to come home. Release me. Get, you know... Every day I want to go home. And then saying nothing at all. The Bergdahl family, watching their son change before their eyes, grew increasingly frustrated. Bo's older sister, Sky, posted on her blog, quote, I am relying on God's time in this, but I am quite disappointed in my American people, in my American forces, and my president in particular. These people here will not leave you on the battlefield. Your country will not leave you on the battlefield. You are not forgotten. Janie and Bob Bergdahl started speaking out, too, at rallies and to reporters. I wake up each morning, and my first thought is my son is still prisoner of war in Afghanistan. And 
I need to do something about that. Bob Bergdahl retired after his 28 years as a UPS driver, devoted himself full time to studying the world his son was now living in. I'm trying to learn a little Pashto so I can speak with people. I'm trying to write or read the language. I probably spend four hours a day reading on the region, on the history. Bob even grew out a beard in solidarity and spoke directly to no. Bo's captors. To the people of Afghanistan, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace of God and the blessings that come from God be upon you. He had not given up hope. A father does not leave his son alone on the battlefield. Apparently, neither had his son. Physically fit and, uh, you know, I can do, you know, I can do squats. Sometime in 2011, Bergdahl managed to escape. Reports from Taliban sources say his captors had stopped keeping a close eye on him, and Bergdahl took advantage, making a run for it. He managed, according to an account in the Daily Beast, to survive for three days on his own. Three days of desperate freedom before the Taliban found him in the woods, nearly naked and hiding in a trench he had dug with his bare hands. Upon being discovered, he fought like a boxer, said the source, before succumbing to his captors and being dragged back in shackles. He had no English speakers around him, um, and I'm not surprised by these reports of an escape. It is not fun being in Taliban captivity. You know, frankly, you just want this to end, and if you're going to die in the escape, you know, you're going to die. Unbowed, he tried again, running to a nearby village looking for help, but finding no friendly faces. The locals returned him to his captors, according to one account. The escape attempts put his captors on high alert, now moving him stealthily through the mountains of Pakistan, hoping to keep their golden goose out of the hands of any would-be rescuers. But how did Bo Bergdahl end up here in the first place? Some of his fellow soldiers are not so sure. Some say he had only himself to blame. Some say he walked right into the enemy's hands. The American is in Yahya Kale. He's looking for someone who speaks English so he can talk to the Taliban. And I, I heard it straight from the interpreter's lips as he heard it over the radio. There's a lot more to this story than just a soldier walking away. Was Bergdahl really looking for the Taliban? Who or what was he searching for? Those first fateful hours when we come back.